بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We welcome all our attendees and participants to this first of six uh, sessions of the Fiqh of the Fundamentals program brought to you by Dean Pro in partnership with Al Burhan, Madrasa Urwa bin Zubair, and Jamia Al Ulum Al Islamiyah. Uh, the Fiqh of the Fundamentals program intends to refresh uh, for the participants the basic fundamental laws of Islam. Uh, and uh, rejuvenate the spirit for the pursuit of Islamic knowledge. So today we are going to be looking at the topic Aqaid, which basically translates as the beliefs of Islam. And the program will be delivered by myself, uh, Safwan Navlaki, and I am uh, a representative of Dean Pro. Uh, inshallah, we will be taking you through the contents for the next hour or so, inshallah. Please feel free to pose questions that may come into your mind. Uh, for those who are on site, to post it on the, uh, to send it via WhatsApp to the admin. And for those who are online, to, to post the same in the Zoom chat box, inshallah. And we will try to address it as time permits towards the end, inshallah. Okay, so looking at the contents that we will be covering, inshallah, there are five areas that we will be covering. The first of them being the importance of Iman. Uh, what role does Iman play in relation to our practicing of Islam? And uh, how, does it, uh, how, how does it measure in importance in relation to all the other aspects of Islam? Then we will look at the, the fundamental essence of Iman and how a person achieves Iman and that is through proclamation and testification to the Shahadatain. Uh, request any participants who are online to please mute their mics. Jazakallah. Okay. So those who are online, please stay muted uh, and pose your questions via the, the, the chat box. We will attend to it there, inshallah. The Shahadatain, faith without reservation and the seven articles of faith. And then towards the end, we have an additional uh, point to discuss, which is the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. So without further ado, let's get into it, inshallah. The importance of Iman. Iman in relation to all the laws of Islam in totality is like the central pillar that holds everything else up. So Allah subhanahu uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa mentions in uh, the famous hadith, Bunya al-Islam wa ala khams, Islam is built on five fundamentals, five pillars, and those pillars are enumerated in that particular hadith. The first of them being testifying that there is none worthy of worship except Allah, and that the Holy Prophet Muhammad وسلم, is his servant and messenger. And then we go on to Salah, Zakat, uh, Fasting and Hajj. So the first of the five pillars of Islam is this testification to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the prophethood of Rasulullah And this is what would validate everything that comes thereafter. So if we have to picture a huge... Uh, tent structure or a building and you've got the entire building resting on a foundation on, on, on the central pillar and then around that central pillar you've got various other pillars that support it and support the structure should that central pillar be compromised or broken then the entire building will collapse whereas the remaining pillars around provide the support to the central pillar and if they collapse then that will also uh, weaken the entire structure but without the central uh, pillar then the entire structure will definitely fall uh, immediately or within a very short space of time uh, so this iman and and testifying to the oneness of allah and the prophethood of rasulullah is that central pillar and another easy 
way of understanding how this validates everything else is where our a'mal are, are all uh, in a are all zeros in a in a number, right? They are all zeros, and uh, iman is the one that comes before the zeros. So a person can have as many a'mal as many zeros as he'd like to have. It can be a thousand, a million zeros that that are in that particular number, but without the one that comes in front of it, all those zeros will remain zero. But that one will change the many zeros into a thousand, thousands or millions or billions or trillions and so forth. So this is the space, the you know, the value and the and the and the level that iman has in relation to all the other tenets of Islam. So in this particular ayah that's on the screen, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, Qul hal bil a'mala. Say, shall we fully inform you who will be the greatest losers in their deeds? Then Allah says, Alladina dalla sa'yuhum fil hayati dunya, those whose efforts in this world are misguided, even though wahum yahsabuna annahum yuhsinuna suna, even though they thought that they were doing works of righteousness. So despite them engaging in a lot of good deeds, charity, kindness to others and so forth, but they did not have that one, the Iman, to validate all of those good actions. So despite all their good qualities and their good actions, they uh, belied and they rejected the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, and they rejected uh, meeting him one day on the day of Qiyamah فَحَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ And as a result of the uh, of, of them not having Iman فَحَبِطَتْ أَعْمَالُهُمْ Their deeds have gone to waste فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَا And all their actions that they did will not have any weight at all on the day of Qiyamah uh, A hadith in, you know, in the similar line and spirit is the hadith of Abu Imran al-Jawni narrated from Umar radiallahu anhu, where Umar radiallahu anhu passed by a, a monastery of a monk and this monk was called out when he emerged they noticed that this person was someone who really exerted himself in worship and had forsaken the world so you could see the effects of that on his body and his clothing when Umar radiallahu anhu saw this monk in this condition he was a Christian monk Umar radiallahu anhu began weeping and somebody said then that Amir al-Mu'mineen, this is a Christian. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, yes, but I remembered the ayah of the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ghashiyah, وُجُوهُ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ خَاشِعَ عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَةٌ تَصْلَى نَارًا حَامِيَةٌ There will be faces on that day that will be very submissive uh, and عَامِلَةٌ نَاصِبَةٌ They... Uh, the, the the you know the signs of their exertion and and their tiring in worship will be visible on them the fatigue tasla naran hamia and despite all of that they will enter into the blazing fire so when umar radiallahu anhu saw the condition of this particular person and reflected over this particular verse of the holy quran then that led him to uh, to to tears so this again is a, an emphasis of how important Iman is in relation to uh, all other good deeds. So Umar radiallahu anhu said, I pitied him for despite his toil and ex exhaustion, he will enter the blazing fire. Okay, moving on to the next aspect now, which is the shahadatain, the declaration of faith. Now this is what would uh, enter a person into Islam what would uh, uh, classify a person as a believer is by them t uh, taking this declaration of faith. So in this particular hadith, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu relates that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent Mu'ad radiallahu anhu to Yemen and he told him to invite the people of Yemen to the shahada which is Shahadati Allah ilaha illallah wa anni Rasulullah. So testifying to the oneness of Allah and to the prophethood of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if they uh, comply with that requirement, then he is required to teach them 
all the other fara'id that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made in, uh, compulsory upon them. So again, this the first step in the journey of becoming a Muslim is the declaration of faith. And this is something that uh, we ought to refresh all the time and continue uh, renewing our declaration of faith by reciting the first kalima, the second kalima, as Rasulullah has encouraged us, Jaddidu imanakum bi la ilaha illallah by saying la ilaha illallah. Then we move on to belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What is our belief when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And here there is an interesting uh, narration in the book, in the hadith book Sunan At-Tirmidhi from Ubay bin Ka'bah radiallahu anhu where he says that the disbelievers, the, the polytheists of Mecca said to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam O Muhammad, unsub lana rabbak, tell us what is the lineage of your Lord, what is his status and pedigree and then uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in response to this particular question of theirs uh, revealed this uh, uh, surah of the Holy Quran, which we know as Surah Al Ikhlas, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala describes Himself by saying, Qul, say He is Allah, the One, Ahadun, the One. Allah is Samad. Allah is the is Samad. What is Samad? Samad is the One who is fully independent of all others. But not only that, everyone is dependent on Him. So this is the quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam yalid, he has never had offspring. Walam yulad, nor was he born. Walam yakullahu kufuwan ahad. And there is none that is comparable to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is of his own kind. And there is none that can come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any, in any way whatsoever. Then, a few more details with regards to our belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and this is an excerpt of a famous book of Aqeedah which is uh, studied in, uh, and this the, this book is called Al-Aqeedah Al-Tahawiyah and it is translated it has been translated into English by a well-known alim of Durban uh, Mawlana Fahim Hussein uh, and it's, it's, it is an easy read so those of uh, you who are able to should acquire this book. It is available in most of the bookshops and a very good quality print as well. So this will be in uh, you know something that will add additional value and take your learning in Aqidah further, uh, uh, starting from this particular program this morning, inshallah. So Imam Tahawi, rahimahullah, in this book he mentions uh, regarding Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, la tubliguhul. Awham, la tubliguhu awham. Imagination cannot conceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is beyond, he is beyond uh, uh, conception. Nobody can understand the, 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 the scope and the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wala tudrikuhu al-afham. No matter how much uh, minds are applied to understanding and comprehending the being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is something that can never be achieved. And that is why uh, ulama mention that uh, that uh, that we should uh, we should not try to unpack and delve into the that the being of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala because this is something that we will never be able to comprehend. And they say al ajzu anil idraki idrak by you uh, uh, submitting to the fact that you will never be able to fully understand. This means that you have reached. The level of understanding. وَالتَّفَكُّرُ فِي ذَاتِ اللَّهِ إِشْرَاقِ But when you now delve into the uh, being of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is going to leave you, lead you uh, at some point to shirk because you are always going to apply your mind uh, based on what you know and what you see and what you understand uh, in the world around you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is far beyond that. Thereafter, Imam Tahawi goes on to say, وَلَا يُشْبِهُهُ الْأَنَامِ وَلَا يُشْبِهُهُ الْأَنَامِ وَلَا تُشْبِهُهُ الْأَنَامِ Nor do created beings resemble Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beyond 
description and we cannot attribute the uh, physical qualities and attributes of any creation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hayyun la yamut, qayyumun la yanam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is uh, ever living and he does not die. And he is the all sustaining who never sleeps. Now this word qayyum again relates to the uh, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains everything. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains everything at all times and he does not require any other assistance or any, any being to sustain him. خَالِقٌ بِلَا حَاجَةٌ رَازِقٌ بِلَا مُؤُنَةٌ And just going back a little bit, this uh, aspect is confirmed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, in, in, in Ayatul Kursi where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says الله لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم لا تأخذه سنة ولا نوم no sleep, no slumber overtakes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so all of these aqaid that we are mentioning are based and premised on uh, uh, concrete evidences in the Holy Quran and in the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam خالق بلا حاجة Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates without need so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in no way in need of our existence. We are completely uh, in, in all ways possible. We are the servants and slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and completely dependent on Him. Whereas Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not even in need of our creation and our, uh, and, and, and our uh, worshipping of Him. Raziqun bila mu'na Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sustains without any effort. What, whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does and whatever He creates is done without any exertion or effort from His side. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, إِنَّمَا قَوْلُنَا لِشَيْءٍ إِذَا أَرَدْنَاهُ أَن نَقُولَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونْ Verily, our word unto a thing when we intend it, it is only that we say, be. And from that word, kun, فَيَكُونْ Then that comes into being and comes into existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes death without fear. مُمِيتٌ بِلَا مَخَافَةٌ بَاعِثٌ بِلَا مَشَقَّةٌ And He raises to life without difficulty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes us to die and He raises back to life without difficulty. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, uh, with regards to the resurrection and recreation of man, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions وَهُوَ أَهْوَنُ عَلَيْهِ That this, by applying logic, is definitely easier than the first. But for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all are easy, all are, all are equal, in that it is just a matter of kun fayakun. But in order for us to make it easy for us to understand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for a creation, for a human being, uh, the first time he does something uh, he, he, and, and achieves it, he may have to put some effort and the second time will be easier. So for, Allah, for us to understand the recreation and resurrection of man after uh, death is much easier for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, it, it, it is as easy as the first. But from our understanding, it would be easier because it is a second time doing the same thing. Okay, so that is in summary uh, some of the beliefs that we have with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is not all the beliefs. As we mentioned in the introduction that this is simply, uh, you know, the, uh, showing you an opening into the, the, the window of aqaid and it is for you now to enter and uh, explore further inshallah so we are just covering some of the fundamentals moving on now to our belief with regards to our master rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam so what does allah uh, what what does imam uh, tahawi mention in his book with regards to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says wa anna muhammadan sallallahu alaihi wasallam and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is Abduhul Mustafa. He is the uh, chosen slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ونبيه المجتبى his elected prophet ورسوله المرتضى and the messenger that he has been uh, that he has chosen and he is pleased with وأنه خاتم الأنبياء and this prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is the seal of all the prophet uh, of, of 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 all the prophets the leader of the pious wa imam al atqiya wa sayyid al mursalin wa habibu rabbil alamin and the uh, the chief of all the messengers and the beloved of the lord of all the worlds so our belief with regards to rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is that he is the most loftiest of all the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and there is no none no creation that surpasses Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in rank and uh, in in dearness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala despite all of the great qualities of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned us that la tutruni kama atrat nasara ibn maryam إنما أنا عبد فقولوا عبد الله ورسوله. Do not exaggerate my praises as the Christians did for Isa, Jesus, the son of Maryam, Mary, عليه السلام. I am but a slave. Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم says I am but a slave. So call me عبد الله, slave of Allah ورسوله and his messenger. So despite the various supreme and superb qualities of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. Uh, it is important that we understand the limits and we do not attribute divine qualities to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam as that may lead us to a form of shirk may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us so we appreciate and fully value uh, the prophet of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam but we uh, only adhere and we restrain ourselves to the praises and the qualities that are mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in himself and that are mentioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the holy Quran with regards to the seal of the prophethood of of prophethood and and the seal of the prophets there were many false prophets that uh, reared their nasty heads during the uh, time of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam amongst them Usaylama al-Kadhab Tulayha al-Asadi, Sajah, and 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 Aswad al-Ansi, and these were people who proclaimed prophethood, and they were out to seek political power and leadership, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala dealt with all of them. Some of them repented, but those who did not were eventually destroyed and defeated by the Muslims. Uh, in uh, more recent times, there was a person by the name of Ghulam Ahmad Qadiani who uh, proclaimed uh, prophethood as well, and Allah Subhanahu wa Taala led him to a disgraceful end. And it is uh, important for us to understand that uh, there are certain people who attribute themselves towards Islam and proclaim that they are Muslims, but they possess such traits and such beliefs that render them out of the fold of Islam. And the followers of this particular person, they are prevalent in many parts of the world today uh, and they are referred to as Ahmadis. So uh, we should be wary of this particular uh, point and ensure that we do not uh, take things for granted and uh, understand that there are people out there who pro make proclaim to be Muslims but because of their uh, corrupted beliefs, they are out of the fold of Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that. Uh, then Imam Tahawi goes on to say, وَكُلُّ دَعْوَةٍ نُبُوَّةٍ بَعْدَ نُبُوَّتِهِ فَغَيٌّ وَهَوَى Every claim to prophethood after him is a falsehood and misguidance. وَهُوَ الْمَبْعُوثُ إِلَىٰ عَامَّةِ الْجِنِّ وَكَافَةِ الْوَرَىٰ He is the one sent to all jinn and mankind. So, uh, as opposed to the other prophets and messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was sent to all mankind, for every nation and every people until the end of time. Whereas the uh, previous prophets, the previous messengers were sent to, and their messages were limited to the people of their era or their locality, the place where they lived. But the 
message of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is eternal and perennial and will last until the end of time. And uh, this is uh, confirmed by Allah subhanahu wa taala in Surah Al-Araf, where Allah subhanahu wa taala says to Rasulullah, uh, say, say to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, say, "Qul ya ayyuhan nas, O mankind, inni Rasulullah ilaykum jamia. I am the messenger of Allah to all of you." Okay, now moving on to the next uh, aspect of our uh, discussion this morning, faith without reservation. So we uh, uh, probably are familiar with this uh, kalima, which we refer to as imani mujmal. The concise statement of faith. The concise statement of faith, uh, which uh, many of us would have learned and our children uh, probably learn it in maktab as well at a young age. Uh, the, the, this kalima is learnt after the five kalimas, and it is amantu billahi kama huwa bi asma'ihi wa sifatihi wa qabiltu jami'a ahkami. So this uh, kalima imani mujmal means I believe in Allah as He is. So with all His qualities, with all His names. I believe in Allah completely and fully. I submit to all the qualities and names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the next part is what now is, is the proof in the pudding. وَقَبِلْتُ jami'a ahkami, And I accept all the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, this is how uh, the proof of Iman is realized in a person where he has that proclamation of faith. He says that I believe in Allah, but the, his actions speak uh, and tie up to his words where he accepts all the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and adheres to those commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the summarized statement of faith that we are required to believe in and adhere to. And this is obviously elaborated uh, to a great extent in what... Uh, what are the qualities of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What are the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Like the 99 names uh, Asma'ul Husna mentioned in the hadith. So that, that is also additional learning that we can undertake uh, f following on from the session this morning. وَقَبِلْتُ uh, جَمِيعَ أَحْكَامِ And in relation to the 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it is something that we should all uh, take upon ourselves, uh, make an effort to memorize these 99 names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has encouraged us in the hadith inna lillahi ta'ala tis'ata wa tis'een asman Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has 99 beautiful names man ahsaha dakhal al janna that person who uh, memorizes these 99 names will enter jannah so this is something that we should all try to accomplish inshallah then we should have unreserved acceptance of every order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we mentioned. The elaboration or slight elaboration on Imani Mujmal is the next kalima which we may be familiar with and that is known as Iman Mufassal. Iman Mufassal. Mufassal means detailed. So it elaborates a bit more on what are we required to believe in. So we have aman to billahi I believe in Allah wa malaikatihi I believe in his angels wa rusulihi uh, wa kutubihi his books wa rusulihi his messengers wal yawmil akhiri the last day wal qadri khayrihi wa sharrihi min Allah ta'ala faith taqdeer uh, believing that the good and the bad of it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wal ba'thi ba'd al mawt and believing in resurrection after death so we will elaborate a bit more on 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 these points we already touched on our belief with regards to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we are not going to go back into it uh, we will rely on what we already covered 
wa malaikatihi the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the angels of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are created from nur created from divine light and they are perpetually in the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so as opposed to humankind and jinn who have the choice of uh, obeying or disobeying angels do not have that choice they are uh, they, they are programmed to only obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they do not have a choice in in in, in the matter so uh, this is the difference between uh, angels and humankind and jinn they are charged with regulating the affairs of the universe so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given various angels different roles to play in managing the affairs of the universe whilst allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in ultimate control of everything allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given the angels certain roles to play these angels uh, the major angels that 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 are mentioned is Jibreel alayhi salam also uh, uh, some versions of his name are also Jibrail or Jabrail uh, Jibreel alayhi salam and Jibreel alayhi salam uh, was fundamentally responsible for delivering the wahi and revelation uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the prophets alayhi salatu wa salam the second major angel is Mikail alayhi salam who is responsible for regulating the weather and the uh, agriculture the vegetation and then we have israfil alayhi salam is the angel who will blow the trumpet the sur uh, to commence with the uh, day of qiyamah and then there is malakul maut uh, the angel of death alayhi salam who, uh, which uh, uh, ulama mention his name is Israel is, is Israel and uh, he is responsible for removing the soul of uh, living beings at the time of their uh, stipulated death uh, so uh, here the Malakul Mot uh, ulama mention uh, is the chief angel with regards to who is mandated with this duty of removing the soul from living beings and uh, he has others other angels that work under his supervision under his command and they uh, act on his orders in removing the souls at their stipulated time when it comes to the next point the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it refers to all books or booklets revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as believers as mu'mins we believe in all those books in their original form not in the form that we see it before us today but in their original form because those uh, books of the previous anbiya alayhi salam they have been corrupted where changes have been made amendments have been made by uh, the religious elite in order to uh, in order to use those changes for their own personal reasons and personal gains uh, and political gains as well uh, so the first of those books that are mentioned here is the Torah which was the first major book revealed to Nabi Musa alayhi salam and this is referred to uh, as the Old Testament this is referred to as the Old Testament then we have the Zabur which is referred to as the Palms and this was revealed to Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and then we have Injil Sorry, we have a typo here. It's not News Testament. It is the New Testament in Jeel. And this was revealed to Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And lastly, the Quran. And the Quran is uh, what we could call the final testament revealed to our Master sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And this is, the Quran confirms, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that the Quran confirms and reaffirms all that that was uh, revealed in the prior scriptures uh, to the pre previous prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sorry can we request those who are online to please mute their mics
Okay. So to continue with regards to uh, the, the next aspect, which is the uh, Uh, the, the, the books of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran uh, the booklets of, uh, of, of uh, Ibrahim and Musa alayhi salam Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa this is referred to in Surah uh, Surah Al-A'la Sabbih isma rabbika al-A'la the last verse refers, refers to Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa now with regards to the status of the Quran, the Quran is the greatest of all the divine books and it was revealed to the greatest of all the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it reaffirms everything that, come, that came before it and uh, the core message in all these books are the same because they all call to uh, proclaiming the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they all call to Tawheed uh, and uh, worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone without any partner uh, and uh, there are some ancillary rules that uh, that differ from uh, book to book from from Nabi to Nabi uh, and those are ancillary uh, laws and rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made uh, ap uh, applicable to certain nations for example uh, the in previous uh, religions the uh, fasting the ibadah of fasting included not speaking at all as we know uh, nabi zakaria alayhi salam uh, was as part of his fast he he uh, he was not to speak to uh, to to the people and the same uh, applies to uh, other laws of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he made compulsory on previous nations and those were abrogated by the Holy Quran and are no longer applicable to the believers. Although we submit to all these books, but those ancillary laws that were abrogated by the Quran are no longer applicable to us. Then we go on to the next point, which is the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa rusulihi the number of Anbiya alayhim salam in total are approximate appro uh, uh, 124,000 Anbiya alayhim salam as is mentioned by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam in uh, a particular hadith. Uh, then the Rusul, those who have the status of Rasul from amongst the, from amongst the Anbiya are 315. And what is the difference between a Rasul and a Nabi? A Rasul is uh, a messenger that is sent with a new Sharia, ah, a new code of law, whereas a Nabi is someone who comes and proclaims the uh, the Sharia ah of a Rasul that came before him. So he propagates the Sharia ah of a Rasul that came before him. Now, of all these Anbiya and Rasul. Only 25 are mentioned in the Holy Quran and uh, from all of them in total there are five that have been given the status of Ulul Azm. Ulul Azm are the high ranking prophets of, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they are Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salam, Nabi Nuh alayhi salam, Nabi Musa alayhi salam, Nabi Isa alayhi salam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. An important belief that we have regarding the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that uh, every Nabi is sinless. They are ma'asum. So we have the, the belief of isma or sinlessness for the Anbiya alayhi salatu wasalam. They never disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and go against the commands and the dictates of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we believe that they are the greatest of all creation so if we have to look at who which group of creation is the highest and loftiest we would say it is the anbiya alayhim salatu wasalam the messengers of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and after them we would have the sahaba radiallahu anhum 
أجمعين. And as we understood already from what was discussed, the Anbiya عليهم الصلاة والسلام and the Rusul they have their own uh, levels and categories from amongst them, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Holy Quran in the first ayah of the third uh, juz. تلك الرسل فضلنا بعضهم على بعض. Those are the prophets who we gave some more virtue than others. Okay, moving on to the next uh, aspect, and that is القدر خيره وشره من الله تعالى. Predestiny, uh, it's good and bad from Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Now, this uh, is something that is from the secrets of aqidah is from the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very something that is difficult for us to comprehend and that is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam discouraged the sahaba radiyallahu anhum from delving too much uh, into this area of taqdeer uh, because it is a dangerous path to tread Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in uh, <coughs> mentioned in the Holy Quran with regards to uh, the, uh, uh, this particular aspect of taqdeer and predestiny where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says here مَا أَصَابَ مِن مُصِيبَةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ No calamity befalls uh, the earth or your own selves وَلَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ إِلَّا فِي كِتَابٍ But it was or it is predestined in a book مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ نَبْرَأَهَا Before it comes into being إن ذلك على الله يسير. and this is something which is very very easy for Allah سبحانه وتعالى. why is Allah سبحانه وتعالى telling us this in the Holy Quran? He goes on to say لكي لا تأسوا على ما فاتكم. we inform you about this so that you neither grieve over what you have missed nor do you boast over what He has granted you. you understand that all your accomplishments on on the one hand and all the misfortunes on the other hand everything has been predestined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is really, you know, the answer to, uh, to, to the problem and the, the challenge of uh, wide-scale depression uh, that, we, uh, uh, that we see in the world today, where people are overly stressed and uh, uh, depressed over the conditions that they're experiencing because uh, m many a time it is as a result of trying to control the situation and not submitting to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and understanding that whatever uh, situation I am facing, whatever difficulty I am facing, it is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and He will remove me from that particular condition. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ends this particular verse by saying, Wallahu la yuhibbu kulla mukhtalin fakhur. Allah does not love like whoever is arrogant and boastful. So those who do not have this belief and this understanding that uh, everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then these are people who are arrogant and boastful. They want to attribute their achievements to themselves and they want to feel, they feel that they are in control and power of things. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not love or like them. Moving on. Rasul, uh, the, the, the last uh, aspect here is the last day and life after death. So we are mentioning these two aspects together. The day of Qiyamah will commence, that most terrifying day will commence when the sword, the trumpet will be blown by uh, the, the angel Israfil السلام, and all those in, in the heavens and all those on earth will fall dead except those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills to spare. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَنُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَصَعِقَ مَنْ فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ نُفِخَ فِيهِ أُخْرَى فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامُ يَنْظُرُونَ Then it will be blown again and they will rise up at once, looking on in anticipation. So this is the scene of the Day of Judgment that will be witnessed. Thereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ بِنُورِ رَبِّهَا وَأَشْرَقَتِ الْأَرْضُ بِنُورِ رَبِّهَا The earth will shine with the light of its Lord. 
ووضع الكتاب and the record of deeds will be laid open for inspection وجيء بالنبيين والشهداء the prophets and the witnesses will be brought forward to confirm that they had delivered and conveyed the message وقضي بينهم بالحق and judgment will be passed in all fairness وهم لا يظلمون and they will not be wronged وغفيت كل نفس ما عملت وهو أعلم بما يفعلون every soul shall be paid in full for its deeds for Allah knows best what they have done so this is uh, our belief with regards to the last day and life after death in that it is a reality it will happen in uh, and, and occur in a physical sense we will stand before uh, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith ما منكم من أحد إلا سيكلمه ربه there is, there is not a single one of you uh, except that they, he will face a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ليس بينه وبين الله ترجمان on that day there will be no interpreter there will be no intermediary between him and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فينظر أيمن منه فلا يرى إلا ما قدم he will see to his right and he will only see uh, his actions that he sent forth his good actions وينظر أشأم منه فلا يرى إلا ما قدم he looks to the left and again he only sees his actions and then he looks ahead of him فينظر النار تلقاء وجهه he sees the blazing fire before him so this is a reality that is going to occur we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa encouraged us to ask for which is hisab al yasira an easy reckoning which translates to no reckoning may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lets us go scot free may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all that uh, uh, that that fortune and that luck inshallah so we come to the end of iman mufassal and we now enter the closing points of this particular program uh, just to make reference to the ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah the ahlu sunnah wal jama'ah and the reason why we bring it here is for us to understand that there are uh, as as i indicated earlier on that there are many who proclaim uh, that uh, they are on the path of righteousness they are on the correct path uh, but the correct path is the path of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the path of the sahaba radiyallahu anhum and anyone who claims to be on the right path we will measure their statement and their actions and their beliefs with the standard of sharia with the standard of quran and sunnah and then we will see whether they are true in their in their proclamation or whether they are misleading us so in this manner we will assess and 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 determine who are those that adhere to the uh, ways of the prophet sallallahu and his noble companions radiyallahu anhum and if they if they fulfill that particular requirement then those people will be included in the ahlu sunnah wal jamaah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the holy quran قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهَ فَاتَّبِعُونِ يُحِبِبْكُمُ اللَّهَ وَيَغْفِلْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَّحِيمٌ قُلْ أَطِيعُوا اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولَ فَإِن تَوَلَّوْا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْكَافِرِينَ Say, O Prophet, to them, if you sincerely love Allah, then follow me. Follow me. Allah will love you and forgive your sins. For Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. So what does this mean? Is that we are required to submit to the version of deen delivered by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this will be uh, a means of us uh, achieving the, and acquiring the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَأَطِيعُ الرَّسُولِ uh, أَطِيعُ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ Obey Allah and obey His Messenger. So whatever uh, they have taught us, whatever laws they have uh, communicated to us in the Quran and the Sunnah, then it is that which we adhere to. It is those aspects that we believe in and anything beyond that is uh, rejected and it is excluded from our belief and our iman so that aspect relates to the sunnah in ahlu sunnah what does ahlu sunnah mean ahlu sunnah means the people of the sunnah and jama'ah and the larger group of the muslims 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Holy Quran وَالسَّابِقُونَ الْأَوَّلُونَ مِنَ الْمُهَاجِرِينَ وَالْأَنصَارِ وَالَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوهُمْ بِإِحْسَانِ So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us a very important message in this verse of the Holy Quran. Allah says, As for the first and foremost of the muhajirin and the ansar, and those who followed them in goodness, رضي الله عنهم ورضوا عن Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, look, here are the people, the muhajirin and the ansar, and those who have followed them, all these people here, are uh, from this category of radiyallahu anhum wa radu'an who Allah is pleased with them and they are pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we want to uh, you know fall under that same classification we want to achieve the same outcome we want to be grouped with them then it is for us to follow their ways and follow the version of Islam that they had adopted uh, and then we will uh, be saved from uh, any innovation in deen and any misguidance. So this is in summary what it means to be from the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah, to follow the, that version of deen, those beliefs, those laws that we understand clearly and explicitly from the uh, uh, Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, from the ways and the statements uh, of the uh, Sahaba of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam radiyallahu anhum and from those who were their followers who they confirmed uh, their righteousness from the tabi'een and so forth and we stick to their path and through that we will uh, uh, confirm and, and secure ourselves in this most uh, noble category of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah and we will save ourselves from being from amongst the deviant sects as Rasulullah has mentioned in a hadith that uh, my ummah will break into 73 uh, sects only one of them will be on the right path and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa has mentioned in another hadith alaykum bis sawadil a'zam stick to the large group of Muslims and we know if we reflect over the state of the Muslim ummah and the different groupings that exist the large grouping of the Muslim ummah are those who are form the Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah and then you have small groups here and there so we, ha we should be very very careful in preserving and protecting our Iman that we adhere to uh, and we stick to the large group of Muslims that are on the correct path and the correct belief with that we come to the end of our uh, program and presentation this morning if there are any questions please uh, as I indicated earlier send those through uh, via WhatsApp if you are on site or uh, put it postage on the teams on the uh, zoom chat uh, for those who are online and inshallah if uh, we are able to we will address them and uh, then close the session inshallah So just uh, while we wait for any comments or, or, or questions that may come in, uh, just to remind uh, all those who are participating that this program will be run over six weeks. Uh, this was the first of the six and it will take place every Saturday at 9.30 inshallah uh, for the next six weeks. And we look forward to your participation and attendance. It is very important that we prioritize uh, refreshing our Islamic knowledge and advancing it uh, because this is something that we are uh, required to do in order to ensure that we comply with the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيضَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ The pursuit of knowledge is compulsory on every Muslim. This means that to the extent necessary to comply with the laws of Allah, we are required to adhere to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we, we, whatever avenues of knowledge are made accessible and available to us, we should pursue those avenues and ensure that we are up to date when it comes to our Islamic knowledge and understanding so we can uh, have the correct beliefs and we can uh, practice 
on the uh, faraid of Islam in accordance with the requirements laid out in the Quran and Sunnah. So we have not received any questions and we hope that this session was beneficial uh, for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept the time that you have dedicated and sacrificed to participate here. And uh, we uh, request that those who are able to should continue this journey of uh, seeking knowledge in Aqaid by uh, obtaining and re reading the book uh, referred to by Mulana Fahim, uh, 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 the book uh, translated by Mulana Fahim Hussein with slight commentary, uh, which is Al Aqidat al Tahawiyah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.